Hey, what's up? I just want to do a quick video, kind of a follow-up of uh, my last video about the rifle reload. Um, there's a few things I did not mention or talk about in that video that I think are important. Um, and I just want to point them out now so that um, as you move through your reloads and setting up your gear um, for whatever is going to work best for you, that you have some ideas of uh, what might work, uh, what works for me and what might work for you so uh, you could go ahead and try it out. So I discussed the reload in the last video um, from the belt. Um, I said, I, I mentioned in there that if you have it on a chest, so if you have a plate carrier or a recce rig or something like that, that's totally fine. Um, I actually have a recce rig, it's not with me today. Um, I'll have to show that in another video, but I do have a recce rig to where I carry a few mags on the chest, not very many. And I'll talk about that when I have my rig with me. But today I want to discuss the battle belt and why I have the battle belt. And if, if you don't want to get a full battle belt or you can't for your job or, you know, whatever it is, things to think about that you can actually put onto your normal belt if you're carrying your, your carbine uh, during the day. So um, I got my battle belt on right now. I'll actually pop it off and I'll show you what I have on my battle belt so you can see what works for me and uh, you can go ahead and try it. So the belt that I'm running, this is this is the Ronin Tactic. Um, I think this is the Senshi. Yeah, this is the Senshi belt. Um, I have the one without the D-ring as well. Um, the name of it slips my mind. So the one without this retention ring right here. I have that belt as well. This one is actually not mine. This is um, the belt of someone else who is close to me and they wanted me to kind of test it out and break it in for them. So I've been running this belt, this one with this setup for about five months now. Um, and then I was running my other one for probably a year and a half before that and it was essentially the same setup so what i have on here and every every one of you you'll have a probably different setup of for your belt so what i have for my setup um i have i'll just start from the side i have a glock 17 um and this is in a safari land als i don't remember exactly which als it is but um go look into the als holsters i think and from what i've used I like the ALS retention holsters um, the most for a setup like this. They're really fast and they are easy to use. They're really secure. Um, one thing I have, I'll show you. So I'm using a Glock 17. This is the Glock 17 uh, MOS Gen 4. I have a Terran Tactical Magwell on it. Um, and we can discuss this gun in a later video. But this is the gun that I carry on my battle belt. Um, for this holster, one thing that if you're gonna get one of these holsters, um, I recommend getting one. I don't like having the hood on it, which is the rubber thing that comes over the top of the plastic thing that comes over the top that you have to flip with your thumb. Instead, I have this button. Um, this button right here is actually an add-on. Um, the normal button that it comes with is actually underneath this. And um, this is just a piece, I think it's, I bought it from a company I think called like Oregon Trail Tactical, something along those lines. If you type in um, Safari Land um, button nub or button extension, you'll probably find this. It's really cheap. It was like 15 bucks or something like that. And it just clamps around it. It makes the drawing to release with that button much easier for your thumb to hit in more of a natural position. Um, it's much more comfortable. For me, it's faster. Some people I'm sure are really fast without it, but for me, I like it. So that's what I got here. Um, around the back, I'm running the Ronin Tactic Sakura Blade. Um, this is a ring blade made by Spartan Blades, designed by Tulam. Um, I really like this blade. I've put 550 cord around it. Um, it's a nice blade. I wear it on here scout style. I like scout style. I've worn that in the backcountry scout style a lot. It's just my preference. You can get any blade that you want or no blade at all, depending on if you're allowed to carry a blade for what you have. Um, this just sits behind me so I could reach back and grab it if I needed the blade. Um, coming around the side, I have a tourniquet. 
cat tourniquet in there. And this is actually a Gerber multi-tool pouch. And uh, sometimes I'll put the multi-tool in there and I can move the tourniquet, but generally I can just put that multi-tool in my pocket and I carry the tourniquet in here, as well as a Sharpie so to write on for your medical stuff. So I have that. Um, this is an empty pocket right now because generally I carry a Surefire handheld light in here. Um, at the moment, it's just in my drawer because I carry it around, but when I'm gonna be wearing the belt, I'll just throw my Surefire light in the light pouch. Um, coming past that, I have this, I guess you could call it a dump pouch. A lot of guys get the really big baggy dump pouches. Um, I've never been a huge fan of the dump pouches uh, because they seem to get caught on things or crap falls out of them or they're flopping around a lot. Um, this is actually a black diamond climbing chalk pouch. Um, I like it. I got this idea from Chuck Pressburg over at Press Chuck Consultant. Um, he was using, I think, an Arc'teryx one. I had this one lying around and decided to try it. This is more for, for me, for admin stuff when I'm on the range. Um, I can carry extra mags in here, extra rounds, um, a Sharpie, anything like that. The reason why I like this one is because it cinches closed. So I can put stuff in it, I can cinch it closed, and stuff's not gonna fall out if I'm running around or rolling around with it. Um, these pouches are also really good if in your job you guys are doing any SSE or any uh, searches, if you're a police officer or an agent and you guys are gonna be patting people down or you know whatever you're doing searches of areas. Um, a dump pouch might not be a bad idea if you're allowed to carry one on your belt um, because you can put items into the pouch and that way you're not having to stuff stuff into your pockets. So um, once again, this is just on here by a carabiner um, through the loops and it's just a black diamond climbing chalk pouch. So moving on past that, I'm carrying right here, here's my crappy broken mag just for dry fire. I have, this is the high speed gear um, taco pouch um, for for AR mags. This one I have, you can get them in a bunch of different mounting options. This one is just a Velcro that goes around the belt. Um, I got that initially because I can pop this pouch off and I can put it on an everyday belt. So if if you aren't carrying a battle belt to where you can lace molly through the belt, but you're allowed to, you know, you want to carry a extra mag on your belt, this isn't a bad option because you can just clip it around any belt that you're wearing on jeans and put a jacket over or whatever you're doing. But um, I like these. They're they're fairly inexpensive, these mag pouches. Um, I'm probably going to put a second one on here. Um, other good companies um, that I've seen and I've used is uh, G-Code is a really good one. They make uh, mag pouches that are similar to this and you can choose the configuration and setup. I personally prefer having my mag pouches that only takes one instead of the double stack. Um, uh, when I talk about chest carriers, I'll talk a little bit more about that, but um, mainly I like to only have one thing to mess with. Um, I don't wanna have to pull a mag out and then have extra space in the mag carrier for the other mag to fall out or be bouncing around. I want the retention for one mag. I want it tight to my body as tight as I can get it. Um, just a lot more streamlined and quicker for reloads. So on this, I want to stop here for a second on where I was drawing. So in my last video about drawing the mag for reloads for your carbine, I want to point one th thing out if you're going to carry one on your hip. Um, once again, this goes on my hip. It's on the left side right there. You can put the mag however you want, bullets facing forward or bullets facing back. You can do it however you want. However, I recommend doing it with the bullets facing to the rear. So the mag is at this angle facing towards your rear. Um, so it's sit on your hip that way. And the reason why is because when you're grabbing, when you're going to grab, let me just throw this on real quick. When you're going to grab for your mag, my bolts are facing back. If you're up and you want to come grab it, it's a lot more natural for you to just come straight back and grab it when you pull it up. Now the bolts are facing forward, ready for, ready for reload. So if you have it this way, bolts facing forward, you're going to have to either go in like that or you're going to be all, all goofy on, the, uh, on pulling the mag out and have to do that. So I recommend having the bolts facing to the rear so you can go straight back and grab and it's quick and easy. So 
that's what works for me. I see a lot of other guys do it that way. Um, and I, I recommend trying that out. So that's that. That's the mag for the rifle. Uh, moving past that, I think this is just, this is a, this is a Safari Land um, dual mag carrier. Um, I have these Glock mags in it right now. They're set up for dry fire. Um, I'm actually not a huge fan of this mag carrier. I'm going to end up replacing it with two singles, um, probably from either G code or from high speed gear. And the reason for that is I don't like that they're forced to have the spacing that they give you. Now it might be just something that I'm particular about. You might like this and might work for you. And that's great. There, um, it, it is a good mag carrier. Um, I've used it for a while now and it works but I feel like I could probably optimize it if I could adjust the cant of where, how my mags sit um, and I could put them individually where I want them. Another thing, if you're gonna go for a mag carrier like this, or really any mag carrier, I don't know if you can see in the video, but what I've done here is I've actually taken some ripped up cloth and I've stuffed it into the bottom. I don't know if you can tell, yeah, you can see the white cloth in there. The reason why I do that is because for me, um, I don't like my mags sitting super deep. And the reason why is that when I go to grab and reload my mag, the better, the deeper purchase I can get on the mag, the better your reload's gonna be. And we can go over pistol reloads in another video. So if you're running some pistol mag carriers, um, and once again, as long as it's um, all good with your department regulation or agency regulation um, or your unit or whatever, if they're sitting really deep so that like only that much of the mag is sticking out, um, Try stuffing the bottom of the mag pouch with some cloth so, they, so they're so they up out of the mag pouch a little bit more. Um, try it in some reloads and see. For me, I'm a lot faster. I can get a better grip on the mag when the mags are a little bit higher. And you see that a lot in the competition world. A lot of theirs, you see the competition mag pouches and they're like barely in. And I don't know how practical that is for a tactical situation because um, you don't want your, your crap falling out. But... I think raising them up a little bit is good. Um, once again, if you're looking at getting individual ones, you could go look at G-Code again. I know um, I've had a few guys that I've, I guess, consulted on. I've, I've recommended they get the G-Code individual ones, and they have two options. They have, a, they have a tall option, then they have a short option. I recommend the short option. So with that as well, um, I'm not a huge fan of having you know, the, the straps or the flaps going over it to cover up the mags. Um, I feel like you, there's a lot of good mag pouches out there that have good enough retention that your crap's not going to fall out, um, with, you know, without a flap over the top, the flap over the top, if you have to, um, do it, just practice with that. It's just going to slow down your reload. Cause you're gonna have to go down and rip up that flap and then grab the, grab the mag. And, uh, it's just wasted time. So, um, I recommend, an open face for both rifle and mat and pistol. Um, once again, if you're doing a chest rig or something like that, and you're doing some, you know, up in the mountains reconnaissance work or anything like that. Um, it might be a little bit different. We can talk about that another time, but for a battle belt setup for, you know, you street cops, you SWAT guys, agency guys, or just um, prepared civilians or military and you can wear a battle belt. I recommend open top. It's going to be easier to get to faster and a lot more efficient. So that's my battle belt setup. And I actually, actually don't have everything on it right now that I usually would. Um, some people out, out there might be screaming, I don't have a med kit. And that's true. I do have a med kit. Um, it, uh, I usually wear the med kit over the top of my knife. So it's sit right there. I have it pulled off right now because the med kit that I have, the pout, the... I guess med pouch is too big for, for my liking. Um, and so I took it off and I'm, I'm kind of reconfiguring it. I do have a med kit. So medical is absolutely important. If you can make someone bleed, you should be able to stop them from bleeding as well. Um, one thing to think about when you're setting up um, a belt like this um, with all your gear on it, um, think about where you're going to be wearing it. Uh, I see a lot of guys that put a lot of big stuff all over the back and depending on what they're doing, that might work perfectly. Uh, I, spent, I spent a little bit of time doing some convoy security uh, for some supply trucks um, in an area. 
And one of the guys on my team, I didn't have this, this setup going at the time. I was wearing a recce chest rig, but one of the guys on the team, he was wearing a battle belt very similar to this setup, and he had a big old med kit on the back. And the problem that, that he found was it would make him really uncomfortable and kind of hurt his back sitting in a seat for so long and having the med kit push up against the seat. It makes you sit all weird. And so he was starting to have back pain. And so it was the question of, do I take it off or do I suck it up? Like, So those are things to think about. So if you're gonna be sitting in a, in a patrol car or your agency vehicle or something like that, um, go and test how it's gonna to feel to be sitting long-term. Um, in that case, we were sitting in these vehicles for you know eight hours at a time. Uh, and it really would wear on you to have something on your back sitting against the chair or the car seat. So keep that in mind. Um, try to keep it streamlined so it doesn't get caught on things so you can be mobile. And uh, if you need to be, if you're going to be sitting down a lot, test it out and see what's going to work for you to have something more flat on the back, if anything. So configure it according to the work that you're going to be doing. So those are the things that I kind of want to go over. Um, for the battle belt itself, there's a lot of belts on the market. Um, I've used tier belts, tier tactical, they're really good belts. Um, I've used Ronin, I've used high speed gear belts. There's a few other um, other brands I've used, I can't remember which ones they were at the top of my head. For me personally, I like the Ronin belts the most. Um, I the, the Ronin belts seem to be stiffer than some of the other belts that I've worn, which is really nice because it doesn't droop that much and you have a lot of gear on your belt and it gets heavy, uh, it tends to hang. So if you can get a belt like this that's stiff, I think it's gonna be a lot more comfortable and I like it a lot. Um, also the Ronin belt, and if you're gonna get any belt, you know, there's a lot of great belts out there, um, make sure it has an inner belt. So this is an inner belt. It has Velcro, the soft side here, and then the hook side on the belt so that when you clip the belt on this goes through my belt loops when you clip the belt on it goes around the velcro my shirt's in the way but it goes around the velcro and so it's not going to be moving around on you so that you can run and jump and climb and the belt's not going to shift on you it's going to stay where it's at and it just gives you a little bit more of a secure um, platform around your hips and it'll carry the weight really well um, having a stiff belt like this as well is going to help with putting on extra gear. I, my previous belt before this belt set up, um, with the stuff I was doing, you know, I had a baton on it. I had some handcuffs. I had a number of other things on the belt and it was a little bit more packed and it was fine. Um, the stiff belt definitely helped with that to make it more comfortable to carry that long term or over time. Um, so think about that when you're getting your belt. Once again, you're gonna get what you pay for. If you get something really inexpensive, it might not last and it might be a little bit more uncomfortable. So um, check out these belts, the Ronin belts. Um, he makes two lamb over there. He makes some great gear. He has some great training and uh, I really like it. So that's, that's my setup. Uh, if you have any questions or uh, any comments, about why I have my belt set up the way it is or things that you can do um, for that is different than mine that you're not sure about how to set it up. Um, I've done a whole bunch of different setups for different people and for myself. So, you know, I don't want to say I'm, I'm the world's best expert, but I've tried out a bunch of different crap and uh, I can give some suggestions. So let me know what you think. I hope this helps. Um, get your belt set up for good, efficient, fast reloads good mobility, good movement, being able to climb, being able to carry the weight and being able to operate for whatever you need to do over the long term. So that's it. Uh, if you're quarantined right now and you can't get out and train, dry fire, dry fire every day. It's something you can do every day in your house and uh, test your gear out and see how it works in dry fire before you take it to the range and onto the job. So y'all take care and stay safe.